Good morning, everyone. Thank you for starting the day out with me. Okay, I have to admit that I was first drawn to my guest this morning because I saw a photo of her and I instantly fell in love with her hair. <laughs> I knew I had to interview her right then. I soon dug deeper though and I became drawn to her artwork, her personality, and her passion that is just so contagious. Her artwork graces corporations and homes internationally and throughout the country. Fortunately for us, we can find it right here in her gallery, Art Gone Wild. Lisa, thank you so much for being on with me today. Well, thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Lisa, I have had so much fun reading up on you. Now, you're not only an artist, but you've done so many different forms of art, too. You've done dance, music. You've recently gotten into cooking, which we'll talk about later on the show. But just tell me a little bit about your journey as an artist. Well, I think um, it started when I was very young. I'm an only child, and my mom was amazing at always providing me with and I'm just always a, a, a many opportunities for artistic outlet, whether it was dance, whether it was music, whether it was um, whether it was just always having a creative space in our home. She had a delightful balance of having her own life and having friends over for coffee, and I always had a creative space. So, and I was thinking earlier today, I thought if I walked around saying I was bored, she would say, "Well, go find something to do." <laughs> and so with that, I'd usually walk outside and pick up bark and leaves and metal objects and go downstairs and try to create something and mm -hmm. the really beautiful part about that is that whatever I bring her you'd think I brought her the the Nobel Prize or something because it went right on the refrigerator <laughs> and, and so I grew up with a very healthy um, belief in that I can mm -hmm. and so, uh, you know, I went from there, I, I studied dance for a very, very long time. I was a choreographer for a while. I even got to meet Brezhnikov in New York City when he was here in 1986. And that was really a highlight. But I found that um, raising my three sons was probably the biggest, most rewarding part of the art for me. And as a result, I liked the quieter side of life. And when I met my husband, uh, he was a full-time professional artist by then. and he asked me one day after we got married, he said, well, do you want to open a coffee shop? Because I'd been an innkeeper for a while and I loved being a great cook and I had those boys to raise, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, do you want to open a coffee shop or do you want to be an artist? And I remember looking at him mm -hmm. during a news um, article shooting, a lot like this, and, and I just, I wanted to just smack him because <laughs> he was going to make it my choice and he was just that sweet. And mm -hmm. so we we actually launched my professional career in 2002 mm -hmm. and um, you know I have a, a beautiful family that teases me endlessly but loves me and supports me so much and so I started right out of the shoot in a gallery I, I had the luxury of that but I, I might have gotten my foot in the door because of his name but I've stayed because of mine mm -hmm. and so probably the biggest um, well, the most substantial uh, event in my artistic career came in 2008 when I said, you know, I, I'm so fortunate that I'm a bigger fish in a smaller pond in the region that I was living in. I had wonderful collectors even at that point. And I said, I want to go to New York. I want to do mm -hmm. Expo. And that's the show of shows. And so um, it's the largest show open to the trade of art in the world. So I went as an emerging artist and my husband was God bless him. He was <laughs> he was just the best cheerleader and oh, he put up with me because I was nervous and I and I was excited at the same time and I said I'm going to have a sellout show. And he'd been by then about a 25-year-old veteran in this business and he was like, "Oh, bless her heart. Isn't she so <laughs> cute? She's going to be so positive." But he got laryngitis. So he couldn't he couldn't be rational with me, you know, mm -hmm. and I kept saying I'm going to have a sellout show. And I had just I had developed my own style early on. I wasn't trying to be so different, but what ended up happening was I was touching a chord and striking a chord that people hadn't seen before in abstract art. And uh, so the first show went like most shows do, and people looked the first day. But my second day, my first sale was five pieces. My second sale was six pieces. And by the end of the show, I had sold out. I'd, I'd, I'd had a publisher approach me from Los Angeles, and I had galleries from New York to L.A. And 
by golly, I did have a sellout show. <laughs> And that's been, um, that was the beginning of a, a whirlwind roller coaster for me because mm -hmm. I am one of those artists that just shows up at a canvas and I had no formal training. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that I couldn't mix the mediums that I mix. And I've been told by, by several professional artists that were professors that said, you know, if you'd have gone to school, they'd have told you, you can't do this. Mm -hmm. And I went, lucky me, you know, <laughs> I, I didn't know I couldn't mm -hmm. do this. And so it's been, um, it's been a magical career and I love to give back so mm -hmm. we talk to a lot of emerging artists and we help however we can but Lisa it's fabulous I, I love your story and it, you your proof that hey anything is possible then you just <laughs> you put your mind to it right. and you do it yeah, <laughs> if you just believe if and you, you have to believe if you mm -hmm. don't believe in yourself who's going to mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's not an egotistical statement it's really true you mm -hmm. know but it's taken a while to learn that well, you and your husband, you, you two make a good team, and I, I love the story of how you guys met. It sounds like it was just love at first sight, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, it was. Scared me to death. <laughs> Absolutely scared me to death. I had met my Prince Charming, and I was just, um, I didn't expect to meet him. And I think I have a lot of friends that will say, well, I'm looking for Mr. Wright. I said, stop looking. Just mm -hmm. stop looking, you know. Um, we met at... Um, an art show in Boulder and we got married a year to the date afterwards mm. and we have a beautiful blended family now and we've had just the most um, amazing ride we are best friends we're soulmates mm. this is where I usually cry but I'm not going to <laughs> and and we really like each other mm -hmm. we are deeply in love but we really like each other we have a lot of fun and we're each other's I think biggest fan and supporter at the same time so I am lucky, but I still don't hold the I don't hold the 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 end on that. Anybody can find it again if you just uh, so you starts by loving yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to give yourself a hug every day and realize that good things come to you and you deserve to have good things. And that's really where it starts. It really truly is, even in relationships. Well, you're giving me goosebumps, okay. Lisa. <laughs> and now you two have started up the gallery here in Key West, yes. Art Gone Wild, and you've also started one in New Mexico. Yes, we did. We actually opened Art Gone Wild uh, Santa Fe on September 12th. And just to show you the speed that we work at, our first trip was July 27th. And so from July 27th to September 12th, we put the second gallery together. And we were so blessed how it all, it literally fell in our laps. We, we really thought our second gallery would be in Aspen, Colorado. And the way that it worked out, we ended up um, going to Santa Fe and all the puzzle pieces just fell right in. So we're right off the plaza. Mm -hmm. And we have a few other artists there that we represent as well that are different from our Key West gallery, but both of those galleries do have our studios in them too. So when we're in either city, we're actually both producing work and uh, uh, it's just been, it's been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. It's been so much fun. Well, so, yeah. Your work is absolutely beautiful. Thank and you. our viewers can go anytime down to yes. Duval Street yes. and check out the work. And Lisa, we're running out of time this morning. But not only, I, I want to tell our viewers that not only can they check out <laughs> your artwork and D. Arthur's, but they can check out your cooking, Lisa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about this. Well, okay, really short and fast. The only child turned into wanting to be the big chef, and, and, and I do love to cook. Who knows? Maybe I'll have a cooking show around the corner. But what I did, and it started as a thank you gift for my staff, is that on Friday night, uh, we call it Friday Night Bites at the gallery, and I show up with a full meal. That The game with myself is that part of it I have to have never made before. I have mm -hmm. to either make it up or read a recipe mm -hmm. that I've never read. And so um, I show up and I love, I love to spoil our staff. And so when we have collectors in town, they usually know about it. We have some friends in town that go, it's Friday night, right? What are you cooking? You know, <laughs> like um, last week, I think we, we had, um, oh, we, uh, one of our consultants from Santa Fe is here right now. So mm -hmm. we did all of the Key West Best and finished it with, uh, with my recipe of key lime pie. But it was really fun, very mm -hmm. low key. And at this point, it's not turning into a restaurant, but you never can tell. <laughs> hey, you never know I what know, will happen, it's right? True. It's true. <laughs> Lisa, it's been a pleasure talking you. with you. Thank you so much for being on. And again, check out Lisa's work by going to her website or stopping by Art Gone Wild. I'm going to take a quick break right now. I'll be right back after these messages. Stay with me.